Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Walsh. I am a project manager here at Wings for Growth. Today I have two very important people joining me to talk about the Global Mentorship Institute, a new and very important initiative of program of Wings for Growth. And they are here to share their insights and expertise with us. Joining us, I have Katrina Schmolke. She is a non-executive director on several boards, and also she calls herself a serial mentor by choice. She genuinely loves mentoring, so thank you, Katrina, for joining us. We also have Bob Ang joining us. Thank you, Bob, who is a financial advisor, as well as one of the founding board chairs here at Wings for Growth as well. So, Bob, thank you so much for joining us and for being such an important part of Wings for Growth for such a long time. And again, this is a huge initiative for us. It's by popular demand. We have a lot of requests about mentoring opportunities. So thank you both for sharing your time and expertise today about the Global Mentorship Institute. So first question, we're going to kick it over to Bob, if you don't mind, just open us up here. In your opinion, is mentoring an art or a science, or do you see it as both? That's an easy one. It's clearly both, uh, and it's art. And if you think of art as including creativity, then uh, like the highest levels of human activity, there's always a component of art and science, including in something like physics, right? Because it, there's creativity involved. But I would say in the case of mentoring and mentorship, the science part of it is needs more development. And I think that's where, you know, looking at it as something that can be systematized, uh, professionalized and institutionalized so that it really is something that's substantive, that doesn't just depend on the creativity of individual mentors is what we're looking forward to. So uh, yes, it's both, but the science part uh, is a huge opportunity. Thank you. Katrina, how should companies' mentoring practices adapt to the change in the hybrid workplace? Well, I think the hybrid workplace has presented a huge number of challenges for companies. I mean, uh, it's a massive change and it's happened over a relatively short period of time. And all of those normal relationships that we had at the water cooler, when we would go for a coffee, these have all gone. So the accidental mentoring really needs to be replaced with something that is a little bit more thought through. And I think that is really the challenge. How do you still create that environment where we have a safe conversation between the mentor and the mentee over perhaps Zoom or Teams or any of these other uh, media when we can't just say, hey, are you going to be in the office? Let's go for a coffee. Let's catch up and actually to the point of making mentoring more scientific I think this gives us a great opportunity so rather than just having what I call accidental mentoring and just when somebody maybe needs it and they maybe say oh if you're in the office could we have a chat making it much more organized and having companies embrace a culture where they make time make time to have those very purposeful conversations. I think that will help us certainly navigate in this hybrid environment we find ourselves in. So let me ask you a follow-up question to that because you touched on, you know, a few different things there. So in your opinion, Katrina, how important is it for senior leaders to be mentors? Well, in my opinion, senior leaders fundamentally should be mentors. The hopefully have benefited from mentors to get them to be a senior leader and that they understand that having that additional support to not just their own uh, abilities and their own environment but having that person to talk to that person to help keep them centered and also uh, focused i think is very important so i would hope they would see um, mentoring and the art and science of mentoring as a core skill of being a senior leader. And I think the biggest challenge, however, for senior leaders is 
they get extremely busy and you can never get any time on their calendars. And I think that's going to be a big challenge for senior leaders as well, as they try and navigate through this uh, very changing world. I think, again, senior leaders need to step back and they need to think about what they benefited from and then pay it forward to um, mentees that they can influence and support. So how have you found time for your mentoring? Oh, sorry, Bob, did you want to follow up with that? Please go ahead. Yes, I want to pick up on a couple of things that Katrina introduced. Uh, yes, it's, uh, the notion of remote and hybrid work uh, is evolving so fast. Uh, but one of the implications is that those people who are working remotely, so even in a hybrid model, that means that some people during the week are working remotely, that the, the line between professional life and personal life is getting more blurred. And I'm speculating here, but I, um, I expect that true mentorship going forward will have to encompass more of employees' personal life because of that remoteness, it's getting more blended, right? So you cannot just kind of draw a hard line and say, okay, I'm gonna mentor you about how to be a better this or a better that at the office, without touching on parts of their personal life. And that's one of the implications of uh, how we relate to work, how we relate to the office that is evolving so fast that we really don't have a handle on that. And the second theme that uh, Katrina picked, that I'll pick up on is, so as we think through mentorship, uh, we really have to come up with, it has to be more methodical, it has to be thought through. It has to be by design and not by accident or by some whim, right? Because all these components, people not being in the office and trying to be more scientific about it, um, really implies that the, um, the systematizing, being more methodical, uh, being more intentional about mentorship uh, is going to play a more and more central role. Which brings me to the third implication, and uh, which is that the, uh, I'm gonna, in my opinion, uh, and Katrina touched on this, the future of leadership really rests on better mentorship. Uh, in other words, we will, the, the future of leadership, we will not be able to extract uh, mentorship uh, and say, oh, um, you know, that's, it's an afterthought, it's nice to have. Uh, but that the future of leadership and the future of mentorship is going to be more integral by necessity uh, to bring on more and more next generations of leaders. So, Bob, you touched on what I was going to lead to next, which was why should a CEO or what should they do? Excuse me. What should a CEO do to develop a mentoring culture? You're talking about the importance of it, but how, what should they do to actually build the organizational excellence that it takes to create a mentoring culture. What should CEOs do to develop a mentoring culture? And that, you know, of course, segues in building organizational excellence. How do they do that? What should they do? Um, we just want to hear, in your opinion, what can be done to support this very important initiative. Yeah, it's a really interesting question. I think, well, first of all, CEO leads from the front, he leads from the top, and clearly you would hope that the CEO themselves is uh, a mentor. Um, people I know often seek out the CEO and ask them to be their mentors. So I think CEOs perhaps themselves can a little, get a little bit busy on, and maybe have to be more selective. What I don't want to see a CEO do is say, oh, here's a job for the HR department. You know, this we need a mentoring program and pass it to the human resources part. Um, and my experience and my background and where I came from is very much just this culture. This is about um, leading with purpose and being a leader who wants to listen to people. And if you, you know, and any CEO who knows the importance of having uh, good people who want to work there, grow the talent, 
and and be a, a wonderful company where people belong and thrive know that mentorship and genuine authentic mentorship is woven into the fabric of the culture so this isn't a tap that we can switch on or or, or something that we can say make it happen this has to happen and it needs to be done with authentic leadership and the companies who crack that are going to be the successful companies because they're going to retain their people and they're going to have a much more purposeful uh, outcome which I think they'll see right down in the bottom line as well. Final question and this is tricky I would like you both to answer I'll let you fight over who wants to go first how would a mentor measure their success with mentoring? I would say that there are at least two sets of measures, one that are, let's think in temporal terms, um, and perhaps short term, longer term, but also more things that are quantifiable, observable versus things that are more intangible. And I think that, so if we look at it that way, uh, then some of the things that a mentor should be looking at is you know, particularly if a mentor is looking also to possibly sponsor, be a sponsor. Uh, so then there should be some tangible, nearer term outcomes. Um, and it may involve some skill enhancement. Um, it may involve some opening some doors. Uh, it may involve a number of things that are nearer term, let's call it three, six months, even up to 12 months. Uh, that are observable, if not totally measurable, right? But I think it also means to enhance their aptitude, their potential for success going forward. And that's a little bit less tangible, uh, but still something that you can glean from as a mentor. Hey, that I've helped this person meet these short-term, kind of more observable skills uh, upgrades and enhancements, uh, I've opened the doors for her to like, be able to talk about this potential or that opportunity. But it, it really is, how do I set her up for like success for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, and then for her success as a, not just in the C-suite, but as a mentor to the next generation of leaders. Uh, and that's less measurable, but has longer term impact. Excellent. Thank you, Bob. I think I've been mentoring for probably three decades. Um, and I think for me, a sign of success has been when my mentors become the mentors and I watch them mentoring others and seeing the people that are now in their their under their influence you know succeed and you realize it's like a ripple effect it's like you throw the pebble in the pond and then it ripples out and you can sit there on the beach watching and think i had something to do with that and i you know and i just think there's a there's a lot that goes on beneath the water level um with mentors it's not just helping them with um, the mentee needing your immediate help. Some of them, it's long, it's a long-term relationship. Um, and for some, it might be quite an intense conversation around an issue. And then you see them rise above that issue. You see them take that on. And then it might go quiet for a little while, but then they come back. And I always think when they come back, they're like, you must have done something right as a mentor. They need your help. They want your support. And I, I love the fact that um, it's not every single month, it's not every single day they need you, but you're there and it's, you're building on a relationship of trust and, and that safe space where they were allowed to talk about things that they might not talk to anyone else about. But when they're in that space with you, that is a very privileged space to be in. As a mentor, I feel humbled every single conversation and privilege to to be able to join them on that journey to be able to help them navigate and so for me um 
the outstanding sort of way I look upon success is not just their success and the small part that I might have played in their success, actually seeing them just develop as an individual. And as I say, when they start to emulate that mentorship with the people around them, I think there's no better feeling for a mentor. Bob, and I can see that, that was great. Thank you. Sorry, Bob. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to emphasize something that I picked up from Katrina's three decades of experience, which is that uh, the relationship, uh, that relationship is unlike the relationship. I mean, it's so um, a critical part of mentorship. And it's different from um, what you might have with a coach. Uh, with uh, 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 another professional, but it's that relationship that makes it much more holistic, much more lasting, much more trusting, as she put it. And that really is the, in my mind at least, uh, a centerpiece of what true mentorship looks like. Bob, Katrina, you guys have been amazing. Your passion, your knowledge, it was inspirational. So thank you so much, both of you, for your time today and for sharing all this wonderful information with us. We are so excited to have you as a part of this initiative. So thank you both so much for your time today. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you're ready and willing to be a mentor or be mentored by amazing Wings mentors, then what are you waiting for? Head over to www.wingsforgrowth.org and sign up. And stay tuned in for more of such exciting discussions. Talk soon.